We begin with the praise of Almighty Allah Ta'ala. We ask and beseech Allah to send His peace and blessings upon His final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon his family, his companions, and all those who follow his way until the Day of Judgment. We ask Almighty Allah Ta'ala to make us amongst them. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. I was uh, joking earlier with some friends that uh, they gave us the most uh, difficult uh, topic early in the morning, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, not difficult in, in, in terms of complexity, but it is something that often takes some time for us to truly um, you know, uh, engage in the discussion on a higher level. But the purpose of these conventions are not so much to educate on a deep level per se. Uh, the purpose of these conventions are to uh, essentially provide us with some uh, you know, some opportunity to reflect and hopefully, hopefully stimulate our thought and stimulate our desire to learn more. And so when we think about this concept, the idea of the Sharia, you know, what's so scary? Obviously the title was, you know, was, is demonstrating the idea that when we live in a non-Muslim society, there is this perpetual kind of um, uh, indoctrination or this perpetual um, you know, media output that kind of suggests that there's some type of conflict between Sharia and what we believe to be the, mor you know, the morals or the, the mores or the ethics of the society in which we live, live in, which is a predominantly Judeo-Christian society but increasingly becoming otherwise. And what we find is the purpose of that discussion, the purpose of that media output is essentially to otherize the Muslim Ummah, otherwise the Muslims who are a minority, a vulnerable minority in this society, in this community. And one of the things that, or the things that they like to focus on predominantly, those who intend, in my, in, my, in my belief, those who intend harm upon Muslims, or those who intend to otherize Islam, all right? They, they, they always focus on what we call the hudud, right? The actions of government, right? That relate to the Sharia. So as Muslims, we need to really kind of take a step back and not always go into the defensive. And one of the things that my teacher, Sheikh Akram, as was mentioned, Sheikh Akram, he talks about, we always have this concept of da'wah, right? We, we emphasize this concept of da'wah, which is important. But our understanding of da'wah is misunderstood in many ways. A lot of times, and I see this amongst young people especially, and this is something I hope that we can try to, try to raise the standard of what it means to be a da'ya, right? To be someone who is engaged in da'wah. That a lot of times the emphasis of a da'wah is we, 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 um, uh, we equivalate the concept of da'wah and apologetics. It's this idea that da'wah is always this process of engaging in criticisms of Islam. And so what we find is that a lot of young people, especially those who have this, this energy to, to defend Islam, right? They learn only those things that allow them to defend Islam. So they kind of have a piecemeal development of how to defend Islam. So, all, so their, entire, their entire process of education is learning the criticisms of Islam and how to answer the criticisms of Islam. And that's not a natural process of education. That's not a holistic process of education. So if anything we need to understand, if we take anything from this discussion, inshallah, is that if we truly want to, right, be du'at of Islam, those who call to the way of Allah Ta'ala, our educational process needs to be one that is deep, that is comprehensive, that is, that is, um, that is, uh, that, that, that engages every element of our religion. And then, once we do so, when we have this deep rootedness in our Islamic education, then we will be capable, inshallah ta'ala, appropriately answering the 
quote-unquote criticisms of our religion. But if all our education is, uh, is built upon what are the criticisms of religion, how do you respond to them, and then when they respond, how do you respond to that response, that's not something that's going to be that's going to ground us in our religion. Our, relig our educational process needs to be comprehensive, it needs to be holistic, and we need to understand that if we want to be du'at, those who call to the way of Allah Ta'ala, we need to ground ourselves in our tradition, and in, 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 in our sources, and in the vast um, you know, uh, intellectual tradition that we have. And so, we need to take a step back as those who kind of hear these criticisms of our religion, this idea, the sense of otherness or the sense of backwardness Allah, when it comes to specifically the legal proceedings and more specifically the criminal punishment proceedings uh, of our religion. And then they'll say that this is Sharia law. Sharia law is this, right? So in order for us to really comprehend, to respond to this, we need to understand what is Sharia? How many, we hear this term, Sharia, whether it's in our masajid, whether it's in our educational uh, circumstances or these conferences, we hear it and we may presume that we understand what Sharia means, but we should, one thing that I've learned as I've embarked on my journey of, of, of knowledge and, and, and hopefully growing in my understanding of, of what Allah wants for me, one thing that I've learned is don't presume that what you learned as a child is necessarily the case. We need to have a lifelong journey of, of, of learning our religion, our deen, and what Allah Ta'ala wants from us. And so when we understand and describe the Sharia, ah, there is, when we, when, when, when we try to understand terms, right, there's a number of different ways a word can be used. So the oftentimes our scholars engage in a linguistic discussion of these words, these terms, defining them linguistically, and then defining them istalahiyan, yani istalahan, uh, technically. What does it mean in the context of Islam? So when we, when we get this concept of sharia, or this term sharia, lughatan, in terms of the Arabic language, it has a number of different meanings. But Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he mentions the definition of sharia in the linguistic sense. And the beauty of studying, studying terminology in this way is that you can kind of see, okay, so this is the linguistic meaning, but this is the meaning in which it's being used in the common sense. What is the connection between the two? And also, oftentimes by doing this, engaging in this process, we can have a deeper appreciation for the, the depth of the meaning as it's being used in its technical sense. So Sharia, linguistically in the Arabic language, as Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah says, he says, a sharia to fil lugha the Sharia in the language sense, huwa uh, tariq alladhi yatawassalu binhu ila al So it is the, the path with which you can obtain water. So it's a path that guides you to water. Okay? And then he says, uh, So how is the Quran, what's the Quranic, or what is the technical way in which Sharia is used in the Quran? He says, So Sharia in the Quranic, in the technical sense, how we understand Sharia means it is a deen. It is the religion itself. The religion itself is the Sharia. Huwa Sirat al Mustaqim. So when we say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim in Surah Al Fatiha, we're saying, Ya Allah, right? Provide us with the Sharia. Provide us with that guidance of how we may be upon the straight path. So the straight path is Sharia, is Deen, and Deen is Sharia. So what we come to know, first and foremost, the, the, the beauty or the depth of the understanding of Sharia. Sharia is that guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to humanity through which or with which we may obtain felicity and success in this world and the next. And this is the Sirat al-Mustaqim. So the Sharia is the guidance that Allah ta'ala sent humanity that is the Sirat al-Mustaqim, that is the deen kullih, that is the entirety of the religion, right? That guides us to the path of happiness and felicity in this world and the next. And what's the relationship with the, the technical definition of Sharia and the linguistic definition of Sharia? As we said, the linguistic definition of Sharia is that pathway with which we may obtain water. And water is the fundamental sustenance of life. We, we, can, we can go weeks without food, but if we go days without water, we will dehydrate and pass. So water is the most fundamental need of the human being or of any, of any being on this earth, in reality, any living being on this earth. And so consequently, the Sharia is that source, is, is that path of life. 
that we can have life in, ev in every, def in every um, meaning of that word, the concept of life. And so when we, when we understand the concept of Sharia, it includes guidance in every facet of our life. There is this idea, and, and this is a, a, probably a longer discussion, but because we live in a, in a predominantly secular world, right? We have this kind of this dichotomy. We have religious life and quote unquote secular life. We have religious education and secular education. This concept of secularizing our understanding of the world, kind of having this, this is my religious world and this is my worldly, this is the, uh, everything else. This dichotomy is not one that is grounded in our, in our, in our tra faith tradition. As Muslims, we understand that Allah Ta'ala sent us with this entire purpose of servitude. The value of our existence is obedience to Allah Ta'ala, is ubudiya. And I will talk about this in a little bit more depth later, inshallah, when I talk about the concept of relativism and such, uh, at the, I think at the youth conference. And so, the, what we understand is that the Sharia ah provides guidance in every facet of our life. Personal, familial, communal, social, even political. Every aspect of human life is addressed. Is Allah Ta'ala out of His mercy, out of His infinite, limitless mercy, provides us with guidance and how we can find value in every aspect of our life. And so the Sharia ah does include how I, it includes my, the states internally. It includes guidance on the evils of, of, of ourselves and the beautiful characteristics of ourselves that we should aspire towards. So we should remove from us arrogance and, and aspire towards humility. We should remove from ourselves jealousy and aspire towards generosity and, and love for all people. We should remove from ourselves rancor and anger and aspire for, for mercy and rahma and so on and so forth. So it includes the internal and then it includes our external. How we must speak to one another. How we must engage in our family relationships. How we must engage in all of our relationships at every stage of our life. And so what we find is that the Sharia provides us a comprehensive guidance, a holistic worldview, and a guidance of how we may engage in every aspect of our life. And yes, this does include those who are at a position of authority. Right? The Muslim who is in a position of authority upon people, they must have guidelines of how they must engage as the authoritative leader. As human beings, we live as a communal people with communal law and we need to have authority, authority in order to provide guidance. And so as a result, when the Muslim is in charge, is responsible for the affairs of a people, they have a, they have a guidance from their creator of how they must get engaged in, su in such a way. And so when the Muslim is engaged, when a society is built upon the principles of Islam, Yes, there must, be a, there must be a mechanism in a way of addressing the criminal elements in, in the society. So yes, of course we have these criminal, criminal law included in the Sharia. But to claim that the Sharia is criminal law and that is it, is a, is, it is a, an injustice to the concept of Sharia that I hope I elaborated for you all inshallah ta'ala. So then the next state is as we come to understand what Sharia is, you know, what, what is the value in the Sharia? Ah? And so our ulama, our great giants, intellectual giants of our history, they surveyed the entirety of his Islamic guidance from the Quran and the Sunnah, the sources of our guidance, revelation. And they, and they observed them and they, and, 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 they, and, they, and, and they engaged in a process of reflection and what they found is that if you look at the entire, if you survey the entirety of the Sharia, ah, the revelation from Allah Ta'ala, the religion, the guidance, right? The Surat Al Mustaqim, the deen that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has provided out of His infinite mercy for humanity. If we look at the entirety of the guidances and the, the, the teachings Allah Ta'ala has given us, the ulama have summarized the fundamental objective and purpose of this entire Sharia. Ah. And they have said, Rahimahumullah, 
the purpose of the Sharia, ah, the fundamental purpose of Sharia ah is تحقيق مصالح العباد في المعاشي والمعاد. This beautiful statement that if you look at the entirety of the guidance from our Creator, its entire objective and purpose is what? تحقيق مصالح العباد في المعاشي والمعاد. This is key. The second part especially. The entire purpose of the Sharia, ah, if you were to summarize it in one sentence, is to affirm or to establish the Musalih al Ibad, the benefit of the, His creation. Fil Ma'ashi wal Ma'ad, in this life and the next. So, the entirety, if we look at every individual guidance from the Quran in the Sunnah, the revelation, the Sharia, ah, what we find is that its intended purpose, its greater purpose, is to provide benefit to the creation. But that benefit is not just for this life, although it includes this life. So whatever can provide benefit to the creation in this life, it is found in the Sharia. Ah. But not just this life, also the next life. And so there's this coherence, this understanding that the intention of Allah's guidance, our Creator's guidance, is to provide us benefit not only in this life, and it includes this life, the realities and the affairs of this life, but also the affairs of the next. And so this concept of secularizing, disconnecting the next life and this life is not there when it comes to the Sharia. Ah. And Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, the great 7th century scholar of Islam, he goes even further and in his definition of the maqsad or the, the, the purpose and objective of the sharia, ah, he goes even further. He says, وَكُلُّ مَسْأَلَةٍ خَرَجَتْ عَنِ الْعَدِلْ إِلَى الْجَوْرِ وَعَنِ الرَّحْمَةِ إِلَى, الـ إلى ضِدِّهَا وَعَنِ, الـ آه وعن الْمَصْلَحَةِ إِلَى الْمَسَدَةِ وَعَنِ الْحِكْمَةِ إِلَى الْعَدَثِ فَلَيْسَتْ مِنَ الشَّرِعَةِ So he goes even further. And, it, it, and the beauty of kind of having this discourse is to provide us with general guidelines of how we can live our lives, even though we may not, all of us, be familiar with all the minutia of Islamic guidance. If we understand the general guidelines of what the guidance of Islam intends for humanity, then we can live our lives as such, even without knowing the minutia per se. And so he says that anything that, that takes us from Justice to injustice takes us from mercy to its opposite, to takes us from benefit to harm, and takes us from purpose, al hikmah ila al adath, to lack of value and purposelessness, falaysat min al sharia. So anything that we, we engage in or understand that is the opposite of these great virtues and values, it's not from the sharia. Ah. So it provides us with this fundamental litmus test of what it means to be sharia. Ah. So he goes as far as saying this, and the last few moments we have together, insha'Allah ta'ala, the ulama have, great, have now kind of uh, taken that general principle of the concept of benefit, and they've kind of def defined it further for us. And many of the ulama, especially in the later centuries, as they've kind of looked at all of the discourse of the past, and all of the teachings of the Qur'an, of, and the sunnah, the sharia of, the Prophet, of Allah ta'ala, they have found that what does it mean to, to, to provide maslaha to uh, the human beings is to preserve five and in many cases and, and some have argued six general universal values that must be protected. What they're called kulyat al-khamsa or kulyat al-sitta according to some of the ulama. And so there are six things that I'll, I'll, I'll enumerate here that we the Sharia has come to preserve, cultivate, develop, and encourage. The first of it is religion itself, the deen itself, a deen. So the deen is to be preserved, right? And so when you look at all of these sub, sub teachings of Islam, all of the, the, the individual teachings of Islam, you can kind of have a sense that it come to, to provide benefit and cultivation of one of these or multiple of these six things. The first is deen, religion. The second is life. The Sharia ah has come to preserve, cultivate, and, and develop life. The intellect, al-aql. The Sharia ah has come to preserve, cultivate, and, and enrich the aql, the intellect of the human being. 
This is far from the atheistic you know, narrative that religion is anti-rational. It, it is, our deen is, is at the pinnacle of rationality. And fourthly, the family. The sharia has come to preserve, cultivate, and, 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 and enrich the family. And, la, and, third, and, four, and fifthly, the wealth, al-mal, the wealth of the human being. Wealth is an important element. We are not this anti dunyawi type of religion. We understand that wealth provides us with stability. And so to enrich wealth of the human being is important. And lastly, some of the ulama have really, I think Imam al jawaini in particular, has really articulated so beautifully the importance of the concept of dignity, human dignity. Right? Human dignity is also preserved in our sharia. Ah. And so if we can understand our sharia ah more, and we, and we, we feel empowered. This is what Allah Ta'ala means for humanity. We don't need to go and just retort and respond to these little individual accusations and criticisms. But we understand our sharia as a whole. And that Allah Ta'ala wishes the best for us in this world and the next. And He is our creator. He knows us best. And so therefore, every aspect of our being is under the guidance of the sharia. And so inshallah Ta'ala, may Allah Ta'ala guide us and protect us. And hopefully that has stimulated some thought for all of us. Barakallahu feekum.